everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Crystal Poe Jones, and we have a special presentation. You guys, it's Mother's Day, so we're just trying to make sure we're filling your day with love, joy, light, and you're gonna catch a little bit of laughter. So sit back, eliminate all distractions, and enjoy. Well, happy Mother's Day. Again, we're celebrating an awesome day that comes every year, and mothers are surprised and happy every time they get something from their children. And so I just want you to know, this is my daughter, Crystal, and she is joining us today. She's a mommy and uh, a mommy of two. A mommy of two. And we're going to discuss uh, raising children uh, because we know all children are different and those different dynamics that come with it. So Crystal, you have two beautiful grandchildren of yes. mine. Yes, I do. So tell us about Rain and Ricky. So I would say Rain and Ricky are definitely two different children. One's a boy and one's a girl. Well, yes. So that's a start. <laughs> one is about to be four and one is about to be two. So that's another start. <laughs> but they definitely are different in their own ways, which is what different means. But, you know, well, they're definitely different. They are different. I have a question because you grew up with three brothers mm -hmm. and you were the only girl. Mm -hmm. um, how is it with Rain and Ricky uh, when it comes to boy, girl? I know Ricky probably don't really know much of a difference, but Rain does. Right. So how does she defend herself or how she she point out the differences or is she still just the mother? Of you know, I'm really trying to get Raina to defend herself more because baby Ricky is very aggressive. He will push her down, take her stuff, tell her it belongs to him. He'll yell mine repeatedly <laughs> and she'll like be drinking something, juice. He'll, he loves juice, so he'll walk up, he'll snatch it. He'll oh, take wow. it. I'll be, and she's like, mommy, you took my juice. And I'm like, you too big to let him take your stuff like this. Like, <laughs> he already short for his age. Like, you got to learn to defend yourself. So, I mean, I don't know, like, what mothering style that is per se. But I do feel like it's a life lesson that you too big to be letting him treat you like this. He's one and a half. So, he definitely is. I would say taking on the role of a boy, the aggression, the oh, okay. persistent nature. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, so. Well, you know, of course, you had three brothers, and I don't recall that ever happening no. at our house where mm -hmm. uh, they tried to take advantage of you. No, because they was bigger than me. Mm -hmm. But I had the brain smarts. I had the mental capacity <laughs> to maneuver. <laughs> in ways they didn't expect. Oh, okay. Had strategies they wouldn't suspect that they wasn't, they wasn't thinking about. I know you told them many times, oh, you know, when they wouldn't want to watch my TV show, mm -hmm. I would think to myself, well, how can I make them pay for this? I'm going to watch a TV guy channel. <laughs> and so they wouldn't, they wouldn't think about that. That's not a strategy they would use. So even they was bigger than me, Mm -hmm. I had strategies <laughs> that I knew I could use to be able to finagle things, not manipulate, but finagle. See, see, that is the very reason I'm so happy I had one daughter and three boys <laughs> because I believe that raising boys is so different than raising girls because uh, girls have all the different emotions that come with everything. <laughs> uh, although I am a female, nonetheless, a girl come with all these different emotions and having uh, raised your brothers and you're coming last, it was a real big change. Let's put it that way, a big change that took place. So, uh, <laughs> but your brothers all had different personalities as well. Mm -hmm. um, I would say raising, let's say your brother, Christopher. Christopher was very logic about everything. Mm -hmm. I remember him being in kindergarten and failing, um, let's see, what was it called? Motor skills. How, how, 
How does a child <laughs> fail motor skills? I mean, what? <laughs> All you have to do is like, if they say lift your hand, lift your hand. If they say pick up your feet, pick your feet. If they say jump, jump. That was an easy thing to do. But Christopher wouldn't do it because he had to know why. Why? Why everything? Why do I have to do this? This doesn't make sense to me. And so we had to do something different with Christopher because Christopher didn't like change either. And right. I think the rest of the house was more spontaneous. Don't mm -hmm. you think everybody was a little bit more spontaneous? Definitely. Yes. So Christopher <laughs> was not spontaneous in the fact that um, if we said we were going one place and we detoured and went somewhere else, as a kid, he literally would start crying in the car. It's, even if we said, we're going to Tars R Us, we can get some toys. He would break down and start crying because we made a different stop than what we said. Now, that's a little interesting. I, you know what? Interestingly enough, I'm just going to ask you because I'm curious. How did that impact your dynamics? I mean, your brothers and sisters, the fact that Chris was so logical and you guys were more... But let's go with the flow. And it's funny because, like you said, Chris, I would say if there was a spectrum, Chris was on the farthest end of the spectrum of let me be logical and only do things this way that it was planned. Brian and Greg fell in the middle, and I was probably on the whole opposite end of the spectrum of <laughs> que sera, sera, we'll figure it out as we go. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, who cares what we have planned? This seems like a good idea. So, like, I was probably the opposite end of that spectrum. So, I mean, I would say I would probably just more so I knew if I was going to try to do anything, I had to get Chris on board. Getting like Greg or Brian on board, that wasn't be too hard. Oh. You know, me and Brian are closest in age. Yes. So we've always been close. So that's not hard. Okay. It would not be hard to get him on board. Greg, Greg was pretty good with the flow. He was closer to my end of the spectrum. Okay. So it was like, Oh, okay, I could get Greg to go along with it. And he's the oldest, so he probably had to drive us wherever we were trying to get to or would be the one watching us right, if, you know, we right. did anything. Yeah. So Chris was really like the turn seat, you know, the turn vote where I had to get him. I had to get him on my side because <laughs> if I could get him on my side, then Brian would probably figure, well, it can't be that crazy, whatever it is, because Chris agreed to it. Chris ain't going to agree to nothing too crazy. And that is true because... <laughs> Brian was the one who kind of uh, measured things to see, you know, if this is good, if it's not good. We didn't really have to worry about Brian getting in a lot of trouble because he oh, like no. he he ran from trouble. It was like, oh, oh, uh, 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 uh. I can be your friend, but if you start to fight, uh, uh, I'm still your friend, but I'm not fighting. I'm not. I'm not going to do with that. Go with that. Whereas I think Greg probably would be, hey, we fighting. But I think, and so the thing is, I don't even think Greg was like the aggressor. Well, no, no. But Greg was definitely like, if you you going to get what you came for. So, <laughs> you know, that's not, he's not going to initiate it. But if this is what you're looking for, you will find it here. Oh, like, wow. <laughs> especially if it came to like any of us yes, in his family. That's true. So, that's true. And that, I think that was like the biggest thing. Like if somebody, because Chris and Brian were so more quiet and like, you know, mild manner and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Like they not, somebody could be trying to pick on them or say whatever to them. And you know, they turn in the other cheek and turn the other cheek and okay, let me be silent. Me and Greg, I like, you gonna get what you came for. Just make sure this is what you want. If this is what you're trying to get. Okay, <laughs> having said that, <laughs> because although uh, Rain and Ricky are small, you still sometimes can pick out some uh, attributes mm -hmm. that you carry. So are you saying that Ricky, baby Ricky, is like you? Uh, it would be so hard because I, and that's why I love to see him actually play with boys because I like to see him in confrontational situations oh, just to different. see how he's going to navigate through it. We encourage independence at a young age in our home. So we'll like let him go play. And um, there's a little boy he likes to play with, Alan. And but he's bigger than him. Like he's bigger than Ricky. But, oh, okay. And so Ricky's not used to that and the aggression. Or even if he plays with Legend, you know, your other grandson, Legend, mm -hmm. his aggression level, he's pretty. It can be high. He's very active. 
<laughs> so when Ricky gets around them, if they take something from him, like instead of like standing up, like now nah, you finna give it back. He'll run, like he'll run and hide. Like if he gets it back, like he'll run and hide behind things like couches and chairs. And I'm like, look at this boy. He trying to flight it out. Like he trying to hide and protect himself. So I would say like, honestly, I don't know that either of them really has that. You going to get what you came for Mm -hmm. yet. But I feel like I'm going to try to. Just not be the aggressor, because that's not what it is. Don't be the aggressor. But I do want them to be able to be assertive Mm -hmm. in various situations, you know, Mm -hmm. learn how to. Yes. So as you all can see, Crystal has a very large personality. And I was so happy uh, that someone gave me a title to it so that I can identify it, so I can work with it, so I wouldn't be trying to change her because I don't have a very large personality. I guess her father probably did, but I guess one, I figured one in the house was enough. So uh, when I finally figured out you had a large personality, then I was able to, uh, let's say, uh, train a child in the way they should go. I can... <laughs> And that's what you, that's really what you're looking for. <laughs> you're looking, okay, so because children are not cookie cutter and you have to, you have to do different things, although sometimes in the family it seems like it's not fair because mm. you really, and people's like, you can't treat them differently. Well, you have to treat them differently, right. not, um, not in a way where one feels like they're neglected. Right. But you have to engage the personality and the characteristics that God gave them, of course. And so, for me, that's funny watching right. the four of you with your children and you're raising them because all of you guys do different things, which is hilarious to me. And of course, it's because of the different personalities, because I have nine grandchildren. So for me to have nine grandchildren at my house, not at one time, no. Sometimes no, at one time. No, no, well, I'm talking about by myself. Oh. Parents must be present. <laughs> Parents must be present. So uh, just watching you guys uh, raise them and how you're, you, how you're teaching them, uh, because Chris, because he is more studious, studious and intellectual, that comes across in his children. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Madison, oh my gosh, she's so like, intellectual yes even to be five like she's a highly intellectual and her iq is probably gonna be like so high yeah just like her like her dad's <laughs> <laughs> finally like her dad's so um again because i wasn't actually in your personal conversations with your brothers um we did at times have a challenge trying to figure it trying to figure it out because uh although you guys were uh good children. Um, we did have our times when, you know, we were trying to figure out <laughs> where are y'all going? <laughs> where are y'all going with this? And what kind of, what are we going to do in order to uh, inspire you mm-hmm. uh, to be the best that, uh, that you could be? And believe it or not, we took some cues from you guys. <laughs> we, took, we took some cues from you guys because you would say stuff like uh, Crystal just wants to be mean Crystal is just wanting to upset us and it's like yeah that's exactly what Crystal is doing now Crystal <laughs> you, need to, you need to be nice we don't want you to be uh, vengeful uh, and you know what children can change as time goes on mm-hmm. and like you said yours are small now but children can actually change because Believe it or not, well, you know, Brian used to be aggressive. Mm-hmm. As a little kid, Brian was aggressive, and we had to take measures in order to keep him from being vengeful. Right. I mean, because he... He would wait. He would plot and wait. I'm making everybody watch the TV Guide channel, and he's thinking, just wait till three weeks from now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I got something for you. <laughs> That, that, as a matter of fact, it's funny because I don't know whether you remember, you may have been too small by the time uh, we, too small when we start, when we were calling in this, but 
Brian used to have a nickname called, uh, oh gosh, what was Booby it? Booby Trap. Booby Trap, yes. <laughs> Booby Trap, because he was always figuring out a way to get people back. And I'm so God, glad Weeks God later. Cha John changed him. He changed him because he would just sit and meditate. I can remember following him to his room after Greg or Chris did something he didn't like. Following him to his room and he was sitting on the bed, just kind of staring off into space. And I said, are you okay? He said, no. I said, what are you thinking about? And he didn't say anything. I said, are you thinking about what they did to you? He said, yes. I said, are you thinking about what you're going to do to them? He said, yes. I said, okay, we're going to have to talk. <laughs> we're going to have to really talk. And so, which not just talk, but uh, we had to pray about mm -hmm. what Brian was thinking and how he was thinking. And uh, his dad, you know, kept him with him, but he did that with with all the boys, he told me, he said, I don't know what to do with a girl because we've had all these <laughs> boys. But, um, but yes, we had to really kind of help him through that. And thank God yes. that, it, that it worked. But, um, but I know you know that it's different raising children just because of the, as much time that you spend with your brothers and sisters and their children. Mm -hmm. And the fact that uh, you guys will keep each other's children yeah. and you notice the different personality. So, uh, I noticed that you all don't try to treat your uh, siblings' children like right. you treat your own. Right. Because you're learning what their personalities are like and what... Definitely. Yeah. And then, too, I would say I just try to... Which I think is really important if you have nieces, which a lot of people have nieces and nephews. I try to make sure that I'm reflecting that parenting style. Yes. Even yes. though I would maybe discipline my child in a certain way for doing something, mm -hmm. if that's not the way that one of my brothers or sisters would discipline their child for doing that thing, I try to reflect, you know, what it is that they would do mm -hmm. to discipline them because mm -hmm. in disciplining a child, you need consistency anyways. So if I know over here, I'm just going to be in timeout for two minutes, but over there, they're going to take my toys for five weeks. Like, it's, it's just different and they'll just try to spend more time at wherever they get the most leeway per se. Mm -hmm. So I try to just reflect whatever it is, however they would speak to them, whatever they would do to them. I just try to reflect and mirror how they are, you know, right, training right. their child. And I feel like they do the same way. That's true. The same way with us. That's so. true. So, um, as mothers, <laughs> we both know that they're different and that, uh, you have to hear from God and you have to mm -hmm. study your children because they go through different phases in life and yes. you have to be very much aware of what's happening with them. It's, Definitely. You can't just, you know, initially people put people in front of television and it was okay. And, but now it's still, it's still different They're because I, it in. because I, I watch you guys. Um, there was a time when they said, don't give children phones. Right. And so, but that's not what, that's not the case anymore. No. Or we would say, the child needs to go outside and play. But that's not really how you all are doing it these days, Crystal. Um, we do. Ray actually likes to go outside and play. And so does Ricky. So they do sometimes go outside and play. Mm -hmm. However, Rain is three and she does have a cell phone. It's not, it don't have, okay, so it was an old phone that I had. So it only operates with Wi-Fi. So she could do FaceTime and things. And she does. She has to call people. She wants to call people. She tells them her phone number, which is actually just a string of numbers and letters. But <laughs> she tells people her phone number. She okay. calls people. She FaceTime people. She do her YouTube. She has things she does on her phone. And we're always watching what she's doing on it. And she has different restrictions that, you know, only YouTube kids, not regular YouTube. But Rain is very, um, she's a three-nager. A three. <laughs> <laughs> so, but she's... instead of trying to be like, no, you're supposed to be a child, you're supposed to be a baby, I actually just try to find ways to encourage um, her intellectualism as well as her thought process, she processes and thinks things through really well. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of, if she asks a question, I just say, oh, because I said, and that's what I said, I'll say, 
I'll think about, okay, why is she really asking this? Because she's yeah. questioning my authority or because she wants to understand more what's happening, how to navigate through things, how to process things. Mm -hmm. And so I try to engage in some of those conversations with her, yeah. unless she's just being reckless. And then I'll be like, child, if you don't go sit down. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've watched those moments. Uh, I've watched those moments with all of you, all of you all. And of course, um, sometimes I just kind of sit and wonder if I really could raise a child now. I'm not really sure if I could. I would have to take tips from you guys. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I'd have to take tips from you all. Although I do know that uh, upon occasion, you will ask me what we what, you know, what did you do? But uh, definitely now it's, it's different. And I do believe that kids uh, are more aware of things that are going on around them. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can't really say just go sit in that corner and don't do anything because I'm the leading authority. Here. Right, right. Um, there's some that are OK, but some that are not. So, again, it's different raising children. It's a joy to raise children. And if you mm -mm. if you if you look at it that way then that's going to be good. If you look at it as an adventure, not as a chore. Right. And I always tell people, remember that you're training them. Yeah. Training requires repetition and you can never get upset. I mean, you don't fire your uh, trainer if they're trained. You know, if you hire a trainer, you don't fire them because they keep telling you you're doing that push up wrong. Right. But you just. You just, you know, follow right, the lead. And so them. we keep all that in mind, too. So, again, it is Mother's Day. And we just pray that you're having a wonderful day today. We pray that uh, you got some really good gifts uh, in the mail if your children are not able to bring them to you. But it's a good day to celebrate Mother. So do that and be proud of your children. And thanks again for joining us. Again, I'm Pastor Deborah Pope. This is my lovely daughter, Crystal, and we show, hope we share something with you to at least entertain you today. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough it'll help, but if nothing else, laugh a couple times. Yes, have a laugh on us. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. I really hope that you enjoyed that time that we were able to have together. Make sure you're staying connected on our social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, as well as Instagram. We want to stay connected with you. So again, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your Mother's Day as well.